Bored Apes really set the standard here. Um, they launch in May or April 2021, right? This is this is one of the earliest NFT projects out there, and you get full commercial rights over your artwork. So what does that mean? Like, what can you do with that? Well, <laughs> one of my favorite stories is Jenkins the valet, uh, one of the bored apes who's like in a, a valet kind of outfit, right? I don't even know. Like, I guess a valet is like uh, working at the hotel, right? The, mm -hmm. And the, the, this this character has been signed by creative artist agency, CAA. I've heard this term before. It's they represent. I, yeah, like, I've I've always wondered what that is. I've seen it just so many just places. Yeah, yeah, CAA. You know, it's just like oh, it's a movie term, right? Like that's what I always think of. Yeah, like some, some some big talent representative type thing, and I think that's what it is. It's one of the talent represent representatives out mm -hmm. there. And when you represent a talent, <laughs> you go find them opportunities to leverage that talent, right? Uh, whether it's film, movie, or film, TV, podcast, whatever, you help them kind of build their brand and, and build the, a path where they can stack their wins uh, back to back and kind of make, make a sensible brand out of themselves. And well, this is this talent isn't a human, right? It's a it's a JPEG uh, <laughs> of an ape. <laughs> oh, it's more than a JPEG. Yeah, way more than a JPEG. And <laughs> <laughs> and and yeah, the, like the first thing they've done is they've already got a a book. So Jenkins' debut is going to be a novel in collaboration with a New York Times best-selling author. And there's gonna be a book written about this this character. Like, how flipping cool is that? Whoever owns this NFT, not only is that NFT worth what it worth like on the marketplace, like rarity wise, but now its story is deepening. It's low, you know, and it's gonna, yeah. I mean, they'll probably never sell it, right? This is like the main character of potentially movies and books, and like that's that's crazy. That is absurd. Do you think the owner? reached out to the caa who how do you think that initial conversation started if if you're another board ape holder you got to see this and say why not why not my ape? yeah they they had I, they had worked hard to develop the brand prior to that i think they had like a twitter account called jenkins the valet website they i think they had even a community built around it and so CA probably did reach out for being honest. <laughs> but that's yeah. That's a good play by them. That's that's smart. Yeah. Yeah. So Are like you gonna that, read the book? That, uh maybe, maybe on audio. <laughs> that's that's a fun uh, thing to buy. That's a fun purchase. Yeah, it's a fun gift too. But yeah, this is not Yuga Labs, that's the company behind Board Apes. They are not the ones producing any of this, right? This is just an individual owner who's going and getting movie deals with his NFT. <laughs> um, now, there are some call-outs, right? So full commercial rights to the individual art. The one call-out here is that the actual branding of the Board Apes, meaning their logo, the like the the font that they use, the colors, the all that that actually is not um, owned by any individuals. That is owned centrally by Yuga Labs, the company. Okay. And so, when any movies and things are made with Jenkins the Valet, they cannot reference the term "board ape" at all. Um, and you see this too with with Punk's comics, right? They came out. Punk's comics came out uh, the, their second issue, uh, which is Punk's comics is an NFT. Uh, comic book. Their first issue was the, the Crypto Punks, which questionable if they were allowed to do that. Um, <laughs> and the second one is um, is Bored Apes, right? And they had to own all the the eight characters. There's eight apes in their comic book, and they had to own all eight of those NFTs to then put them into their comic. So the um, second Crypto Punk, the Punks Volume Two, is Bored Ape driven. Yep. Yeah, I got two free ones because I was an early minter of the original one, which is sweet. The gift that keeps giving. <laughs> yeah, gotta love Pixel Vault. But yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, Pixel Vault's going the route. Like they kind of follow. I guess that's how comic books started, like way back in the day. It was like they the 
or like Marvel or the they, their first few issues were based on like actual like the, like not their own IP but like IP that was already out in the world, and they told stories about that, and then they transitioned it slowly into their own universe. So Pixel Vault's kind of following the same path in the metaverse. They have, they have the CryptoPunks, the now the Board Ape, and they're also creating their whole their ecosystem of meta meta heroes, which is their own IP. I mean, there's a reason I own a number of planets. Yeah, uh, but anyway, so yeah, but some of the the problems with this approach, the full commercial rights, right, is now you got Jenkins, the valet, telling his story. You've got you know board eight, one, two, three, going off and telling their story, and eventually you might, probably pretty quickly, you might have conflicting stories that might get start to be told, right? Like wait i thought apes like didn't do that you know like don't sound like that or don't do that you know and like you get these mm -hmm. kind of inconsistencies or even like what if ape movies just start coming out all the fucking time right like book after book after book movie and now after, it's like, diluted now it's just yeah it's not this prestige brand anymore right because people are just going crazy doing whatever they want with it and so that's where yeah that's where it gets tricky when you give all the rights away and so I think the, the the ideal model is you kind of build the brand slowly and then you slowly decentralize the rights to individual owners, but then you sort of need the DAO, like a DAO to govern the overall brand itself, right? It's it's so interesting because on the surface, I bet people are listening are just thinking, yeah, but how many people are gonna make books about their board ape? How many people are but these apes are worth four hundred thousand dollars at least yeah these apes are the biggest these apes are new york city apartments if, if you don't think that there's brands that are want to like use your ape from a marketing standpoint you they're going to want to use your ape and now all of a sudden you're going to see these apes in commercials you're going to see them all over the place and you might think, oh, 10,000 apes. That's a lot. That's a lot of characters. If you're thinking about like Star Wars or Disney, how many characters can you name? And that's because they've intentionally drawn and like veered it into this specific route. Whereas if you now have 10,000 bored apes all over the place, you can see how it quickly can dilute a brand. And now also, I mean, it's worth bringing up, right? They have full commercial rights. There might be some negative things that are created. You know, we've seen sometimes, um, I guess with Board Ape, right? There's some speculation, you know, that there is like some of these anti Semitic symbols or anti Semitic attributes and things. Like, you know, what, what yeah, that could, like what, if, what if the Board Ape is in like a porno? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, or, Whatever, whatever it is, it, it's the brand, and now people start associating. And you don't know what blows up, right? The board ape in the porno might be the, the thing that blows up even more than Justin Bieber. It might be, you know, like, who, who knows yeah. what's going to happen? And, but now that's just what people associate with it. And yeah. your team doesn't have control of that. And it goes now, back to, like... Now, I will say, I, have, I haven't read... I have to go read Yuga Labs' terms of service more closely. They probably do have clauses in there to protect against things like the pornographic uses and, and some of these more illicit things that maybe they don't want involved. But, you know, there's obviously going to be ones that are just complete gray area where it's like they, you know. Mm -hmm. If you made it this far, that means that you enjoyed the clip from the New Normal podcast. That also means that you would enjoy being part of the Incubator Discord community. This is a free community where thousands of people are changing their lives every day as they learn about crypto. So join that, which is linked in the description below, and introduce yourself. I'm looking forward to having a conversation there. Thanks for watching. Well, I got thoughts that circle all around my head And no one knows I'm thinking But it doesn't matter Cause no one wants to listen But now I'm talking, I'll be talking till I'm dead